South Carolina earthquakes. What in the world is going on in South Carolina? Many of our subscribers are writing me and they're concerned about what's happening in their state of South Carolina. Well, earthquakes. Earthquakes have been happening in and near Camden in Kershaw County for decades. But in recent history, there is an uptick. In fact, as of this year, since January of 2022, there were 12 earthquakes that hit South Carolina in just the first month. That is quite significant. And then another uptick March 11th, which is continuing till today. Now, as far as the data shows, we have had 16 earthquakes in the last seven days. That's unprecedented. Unprecedented. Now, the South Carolina seismic zone is one of the danger zones on the East Coast. In fact, the most earthquakes on all the East Coast happen right here near Charleston. The second area is the Southern Appalachian seismic zone. This is on the mountains. This is where a number of small quakes happen, but nothing large or significant ever. And then the New Madrid seismic zone is the second danger area where we've had seven and eight magnitude quakes uh, 200 years ago, kicking off in that area. But as early as 1877 or 66, Charleston has seen some devastating earthquakes. And are we looking to see another one? Well, of course we are. But when will it happen? Well, based on this information and the uptick in seismicity, there could be a larger earthquake happening near Camden anytime soon. This could be a precursor to a bigger quake. Now, according to the South Carolina Department of Emergency Management, approximately 10 to 20 earthquakes are recorded each year in South Carolina, with only three to five of them being felt or observed. Well, and things have changed. They're much different. There has been 16 earthquakes just in seven days. So that's basically the entire yearly total in a week, 52 times higher than normal. What's going on? Well, South Carolina has hosted some large quakes in historical record. Charleston, 1886, my bad, was the largest quake ever felt in modern times in South Carolina. And that was a significant one. It basically leveled the city, and we'll get to a picture um, description of that quake at the end of this podcast. Then there was followed by the 1913 Union City quake, which was significantly less at only around five, six magnitude. But it all has to do with these seismic zones in southeastern U.S. The most significant is the New Madrid seismic zone, but that hasn't been acting like the South Carolina seismic zone has been. And, well, that should lead leave us pause because the quake that happened back then, let's first get to the the data here. First of all, now the reason these quakes have been happening is because South Carolina is littered with faults. Now they're not all yellow, they're not all related, which is kind of stupid. But the Union City Quake happened along this fault right here in the Pax Mountain Fault Systems up in the northern area. All the quakes that are happening today are literally at this arrow, which is strange because this graphic was made decades ago, yet they're still pointing to this area in Camden. And this is the Eastern Piedmont Fault System, one of the most significant in the state and has been mapped for half of the state and is inferred to continue because it actually goes all the way to Maine and down into Georgia. So that fault is probably there. And then the big ripper, the biggest quake, is from the South Georgia Rift Zone, which again is another inferred fault. But it happened in Charleston back in 1886, and so that is confirmed. August 31st, just a few days after my birthday in 1886, a magnitude 7 earthquake destroyed Charleston, South Carolina. And in fact, it was late August 1886, and they were in the grip of a heat wave. It was so hot during the day that many offices were closed and events were postponed until later in the evening when temperatures had cooled. 
So when powerful seismic waves ripped across the city at 9.51 p.m., everyone was out. People were sent scrambling, not just out of their homes, theaters, and the opera house, but out of churches, offices, and other buildings in which they might not have otherwise been at this late hour. It was total destruction. The worst earthquake in East Coast history in, well, since, well, in quite some time, ever. And there is a study that predicts what a similar one would do today, and it is devastating. In only a minute on the evening of August 31st, 1886, many buildings in a city only 20 years removed from the Civil War were leveled and 60 people were killed with more than $158 million in damage. Using 2020 adjusted figures, newspaper reports from the Times suggest that even those whose homes were still standing stayed indoors in fear of an aftershock which is the exact opposite of what you should do. You should not stay indoors. You should go outside and stand away from buildings. Now, although that quake now seems unique, it is not a fluke. South Carolina's coastline lies in one of the most seismically active regions in the country, with two steeply dipping faults running underneath it. The northeast trending Woodstock Fault is considered the deeper one by geologists while the shallower Ashley River Fault runs to the northwest. If the present is the key to the past, and the past is an analog for the future, then the Charleston region can expect to experience another 1886 magnitude event in the near future. And with the explosion of development and population growth in the last 135 years, forecasters expect a similar size quake today could kill 900 people and injure 45,000, 20% of whom will require hospitalization. And an estimated 60,000 people could require short-term shelter. And that's just not available. And it won't be. This picture is the crispest image of what happened on that day. If you were in this house, you might not have made it. In this one, you'd probably would have gotten away. On the train, you'd have been okay. Not so survivable in this factory. And there are so many photo examples of what happened. And this is an artist impression of the people running that night because they were out because they had stayed in the shade all day and now they were out at night. Factories fell. People's entire livelihoods were shifted, changed, and ended in an instant. And then the rebuilding happens. Now, if you didn't know, and we'll reiterate again, South Carolina on the coast near Charleston is one of the most dangerous seismic zones in North America. The only other more dangerous place is New Madrid and then areas on the West Coast. But the area having earthquakes is north and east of Columbia. So what's going on there? Well, things are changing and earthquakes are happening. And apparently the eastern Piedmont fault system is becoming the most active. Back in the 1880s, it was the Georgia Rift Zone. In the 1915s, it was the Bavard Zone up here and the Pax Mountain Fault System. But now it's the eastern Piedmont. And if we look at all historical quakes in South Carolina, you can match up intensities with counties. That's how good the data is. Number 10 is the most dangerous place to live in South Carolina. So if you're in Dorchester, Berkeley, or Charleston County, hello, you should be very aware of the seven Ps and the earthquake risk, including Colleton and Beaumont. But we're talking about Kershaw, which has a potential shake or earthquake intensity of 13, V-I-I-I. -I -I. That's actually eight. <laughs> 10 being the worst here. So 
Eight is pretty close to 10, and nine is only Colleton, which is because it's close to Charleston. So all these other yellow counties are very high risk. Union was where the five point, I don't remember, four occurred. And if anything of that magnitude happens in the coastal plain, there could be liquefaction and other effects. But certainly, small quakes in this region are felt statewide. So this is not new news. People are scared. People in Kershaw County are scared. They are feeling the last 16 quakes in the last week, and they are scared. Well, why wouldn't you be? We'll leave you this friendly PDF. It's 10 pages on South Carolina's fault system. This is the South Carolina Earthquake Guide published by Emergency Management. And it's free, and it explains everything, including the threat level for South Carolina, which I basically just told you. So what does it mean? What do I think? Well, there is a risk, and there will be another large earthquake, seven plus magnitude in the Charleston region. And there will be another five plus magnitude in the Union County region. And there will probably be a five plus magnitude in Kershaw based on the scientific analysis. Now, a five magnitude in Kershaw is not going to topple homes like this quake in 1886 did in Charleston. But it will certainly break some glasses and shake some nerves some people may get injured, but there is no devastating quake visible on the horizon for Kershaw County or the region of Camden where the quakes are happening. Maybe a larger one, larger than 3.5, maybe 5.5 at the max. But what we should be worried about is a large 7 plus magnitude happening in Charleston in the next few decades because they are not prepared for that. And you should get out of Dodge if it does happen. Could there be a larger quake in Camden? Yes. Are these precursors or pre-shocks to a bigger quake? Probably. And that's our position. We think a large magnitude quake is going to happen in this region soon. And when we mean large, we, it's actually moderate. But for the East Coast, it will be large. This is larger than five magnitude in the Camden area but less than six. And that's good news. And that's a boom to knowledge. Now, if you're worried or you're living in the Charleston area and you want to be prepared, you can always support the channel by going to preparewiththeranch.com. 25-year long-term survival food, the best-selling food in the world for this purpose. Ready Hour. This is coming from My Patriot Supply. And you could save $50 a month for every month you buy. So you save $150 for the three-month package, $50 bucks for the one-month package, and it gives you peace of mind. So if you have to quick bug out, you throw the bucket in the back of the car and you roll. And if you have to camp for the month, you don't even have to go to the store. There might not be electric. What if you can't get out? You set up the tent, you boil some water on the stove, and you cook your survival food and you make it. It's that simple. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, the heroes that share this video. We love you. Be safe. And that's a boom. Ding.